This is Twit. Have you heard the one about the folding phone? And how, uh, you know, it's all but disappeared. Well, that is what Zach Bowden of Windows Central is here to talk about. Uh, Welcome to the show, Zach. Thanks for having me. Yeah, pleasure to have you here. So, you know what? I, I hate to say it, but I do think that our listeners might need a reminder. Can you start by telling us about the Surface Duo phone? Yes. Well, the Surface Duo is a smartphone that Microsoft put together about... Ooh, almost four years ago now, and it was a unique device at the time. One, because it was A, a foldable, but two, it was a foldable with two screens. And um, Microsoft tried to sort of make this device for a couple of years before they actually announced it. They tried to build it with Windows, never happened with Windows. By the time it was announced, it was actually an Android device, and it launched to... I think it's fair to say mixed reviews. People weren't too keen on the software. It was Microsoft's first time building an Android phone and they really just weren't good at building Android software yet. Um, but not only that, it had a sort of measle, measly camera and um, yeah, it was just people, the reviewers were not too keen on it. People bought it and lots of people returned it because of all the bugs it had at launch. Uh, then a year later, they did a Surface Duo 2, which kind of fixed some of the things It had a better camera, had slightly better software, but Unfortunately, the damage the first gen Surface Duo did really didn't help with the second gen. So that product line quite quickly died. But it was a really unique look at Microsoft's vision for foldable phones, this one being a dual screen one. Now, when you say that uh, it quite quickly died, I'm curious to hear what's the current state of the Surface Duo? I mean, is there a a Microsoft support page I can go where it says we've killed it (laughs) and then uh, have... Like, does it still get updates or is it just not, not, it's end of life there? So the first Surface Duo, the, the, the first generation device is out of support officially. It um, exited support sometime last year. The Surface Duo 2 is still supported and will be until October later this year, but it's only getting security updates. Microsoft, to my knowledge, has no intention of delivering any more major OS updates to the uh, Surface Duo 2. Unfortunately, that device only received one major Android OS release, which is abysmal in in this day and age compared to other flagship Android devices. Now, in your piece, you actually mentioned that you're a pretty big fan of the Surface Duo. And so you kind of talked about it. uh, But why, what do you think uh, made Microsoft kind of leave it behind? And to this day, what do you think is good about it? And what's not so good about the device? Why does it still have these kind of, you know, supporters and and, and fans who say, hey, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, well, so the reason why I love the Surface Duo is because I, I genuinely think the dual screen aspect, the that sort of form factor is better than a foldable phone. I currently daily drive the Pixel Fold and, you know, I do like this device as well. But in regards to productivity, I think Microsoft nailed it with the dual screen aspect. I think when they first announced the device, they des- they described it as having defined real estate. And that sort of rang home with me because... I think Android's biggest problem right now is that a lot of the Android apps are mobile apps just expanded onto a larger screen when it comes to foldables and they don't look very good. What was nice about the Surface Duo is that it was two phone sized screens. So you could have one app on one side, another on the other, and they'd both be running like a phone app. They look like a phone app. They sort of format themselves like a phone app. There's no weird formatting going on with the expanded UIs and stuff. And then with the 360 degree hinge, you can fold it all the way around and it's now just a normal single screen phone. There's nothing really special about it. Um, whereas foldables these days, of course, they're like either really weirdly shaped or <laughs> if you open up the big screen, it has a crease down the middle. It's, there's all sorts of just weird issues with the uh, foldables versus the dual screen. I think the reason why it's no longer being made by Microsoft is because one, not enough people bought it and two, people, unless you use a Surface Duo, I think a lot of people don't understand how having a gap between two screens is better than having a crease. I think yeah. a lot of people see the the sort of foldable screen and go, that makes more sense because for watching video, of course, but when it comes to multitasking and using apps individually, I think the dual screen aspect makes way more sense. They should have hired you to uh, do that <laughs> part because honestly, you just now convinced me more than they ever did when they first announced it because I am, when it comes to uh, me sitting at my desk, I've got multiple displays. I like to have two different places at least running different things. And 
yeah, that's the difference. Uh, it makes sense to have these two displays and that the apps can look like they should versus this, let's just try to fit it all on here. But you know, there might be this little crease here that's going to make it look a little, that makes sense. Makes sense. Um, now, you did speak to two developers who are working to keep that Surface Duo dream alive. Uh, I was hoping you could start first by telling us about Windows on ARM for Surface Duo. Yeah, so as I mentioned at the top of the, top of the segment there, the, the Duo was originally supposed to be a Windows device, but Microsoft, they tried and tried, and obviously Windows Phone died off. There was no, not really an app platform there, so they event, eventually sort of abandoned that vision. But a uh, uh, talented developer by the name of uh, Gustav Montz has decided to sort of bring that vision to life anyway and bring Windows 11 to the Surface Duo. And I've actually got it running on here. You may not be able to see it properly, but I've got Outlook running on one side and I've got Photoshop, the full version of Windows Photoshop running on the other side. And it's worked surprisingly well for a device that wasn't officially supposed to run Windows. So all of the drivers to my knowledge are custom built by Gustav. A lot of the firmware work he's done himself as well. He just released a new tool that makes it quite easy to flash the Windows 11 image onto the Surface Duo. And what this does is really turn the Surface Duo into a pocket PC, a very tiny pocket PC. Performance is shockingly good for what this is. It's a powered by a Snapdragon 855 after all, and only, I think, eight gigs, no, six gigs of RAM. Um, but if you keep your sort of expectations in check, it does perform rather well. You can browse the web with it. You can do some light Photoshop editing here, as I have done. Um, and what's really eye-opening about it is that I didn't realize how useful a full Windows PC in your pocket could be. Uh, you know, it's, it's good to be able to pull out um, the, the device and just be able to check a quick thumbnail that somebody's put together at work for you to check and see if it's okay. Opens in Photoshop, works just fine. Um, it also works with the Surface Pen, so you can download things like uh, OneNote and you can take notes in OneNote using the dual screens on here, which is pretty cool. The only things that don't really work right now are sound, although I believe that that's coming and also telephony. So Windows 11 itself just doesn't really support making phone calls using a cellular connection because it's not Windows phone anymore. But um, you can still use Wi-Fi and stuff and browse the web and download apps and whatnot. It is Windows and ARM, which means some apps will run in an emulated layer. But if you can find native Windows and ARM apps, they run perfectly fine. Nice. Um, and then, of course, we've got to ask about... As you mentioned, it was intended to be a uh, an Android device, or I guess it wasn't originally intended to be, but ended up kind of swapping to just being an Android device uh, and found a way to make Android run on the platform uh, from, from another developer. Tell us about that. Yeah, so the Surface Duo officially is sort of stuck on Android 12L, but uh, another talented and also ex-Microsoft developer, uh -huh. uh, Ty Gwen, um, was able to put together a custom Android 14 ROM. So users who are using Surface Duo who kind of want to experiment with the later versions of Android can flash this custom ROM and it will bring you up to date with the latest version of Android. I believe there is a plan to do an Android 15 ROM when Android 15 releases later this year. Uh, but this is quite fascinating because it's a good look at how Microsoft had to sort of strong arm Android into behaving on the Surface Duo, which also may explain why the version of Android Microsoft put together was so buggy at first because Android by default isn't very good at handling two screens side by side. So Microsoft had to do a lot of custom work in regards to windowing and UI to make that, that those displays play nicely together. Uh, technically, Android actually only sees one screen. It's one big virtual screen spread across two physical screens. And so to build a custom Android ROM, you sort of have to mimic that. Otherwise, Android doesn't see the gap down the middle. And um, one of the fascinating things that uh, Ty did for his custom Custom ROM was he sort of took a look at what um, foldables like the Huawei Mate X were doing, which were these sort of inverted foldables where they folded with the screen on the outside. And if you take a look at a Surface Duo, that's kind of the same thing if you fold it all the way around, um, just with two screens instead of one continuous one. And so if you apply that logic to a custom ROM, you can kind of get Android to sort of behave itself slightly when moving between dual screen and single screen mode. There's still some additional work that needs to be done there uh, on the developer side. But um, yeah, it, it does have support for basic postures and whatnot. Um, it's a great uh, sort of hobby to take a look at if you want to experience sort of newer versions of Android, but you've only got a Surface Duo to do it with. Yeah. So speaking of hobby, I am curious kind of how viable do you think these options are for Surface Duo users and who do you actually recommend makes use of these options? If we think about the people who have these devices, uh, is it, you know, if you're an early adopter, then you're probably likely to figure this out or does it need a little bit of technical know-how? And then what are the potential security and privacy concerns of using these kind of custom 
uh, ROMs and, and, and all that jazz. Yeah, I think it's, if you're actually daily driving your Surface Duo still, I probably wouldn't recommend trying this out. This is really only for those of you who have a sort of Surface Duo on the side that you're no longer really using, um, because it's a fun sort of thing to try out, trying out Windows 11 on the device. As I said, it doesn't support phone calls, for example. So if you were trying to use the Surface Duo as a phone, that might be a bit tricky to get the hang of. Uh, the Android ROM, to my knowledge, does support phone calls, but it doesn't support things like 4G and 5G. So if you are, again, using your phone as an actual phone, going out and about, you don't really want to be stuck with 3G or 4G speeds. So um, I wouldn't recommend daily driving them. This really is just for um, experimentation and just trying out new things to sort of try and keep the device useful in your around the home sort of environment. Understood. Well, Zach, I want to thank you so much for your time joining us today to talk about a device that's still kicking, even if Microsoft maybe <laughs> wants to put it in the past. Uh, we appreciate it. Now, of course, folks can head over to windowscentral.com to check out your work, but is there anywhere else they should go to follow along with what you're up to? You can follow me on Twitter, or I guess it's X these days, at Zach Bowden. That's Z-A-C-B-O-W-D-E-N. Thanks so much for watching this little chunk of Tech News Weekly. If you'd like to get the full episode, well, head over to twit.tv slash TNW. There you'll find buttons you can click or tap to subscribe to the entire show in audio and video formats. Or just look in the description. We've got links down there as well.